Okay, so these things have some nice properties. One example is that t of 0 is always going to be 0. Now be careful about this notation. This is an, the 0 vector in Rn, and that's the 0 vector in Rm. So these are not the same zeros. So why is this true? Well, let's see. If I take t, t of 0 plus 0, since it's a linear transformation, I've got to be careful. I'm assuming t is a linear transformation. This has to be true, but 0 plus 0 is 0. So I get that. Now if I subtract one of these off, what happens? I'm going to get 0 equals t of 0. Okay. So t of 0, if it's a linear transformation, has to satisfy this. Another nice thing is we get this. Why is that? So this is basically taking our operation and doing it twice. So if I have this thing here, because it's a linear transformation, I can take each of these. That's a vector. That's a vector. That's a vector. So I can break this out. And now again, because it's a linear combination, this is a scalar number. So I can pull those out because I'm, I know that t is a linear transformation. basically says that I can do this operation all at once and a linear combination of these things gives me that. Now this is going to be a very important result. We're going to see this before because that is a vector in Rm. That's a vector in Rm. That's a vector in Rm and that's a vector in Rm. So keep in mind that if I take matrix times a vector I can think of that in terms of the columns, and by definition, I get that. So we're going to take advantage of this later, and we're going to see this again. So uh, that's a really important result. All right, before we do that, I just want to be a little careful here. And we've worked with what we call the standard directions. Um, i and j in particular. So in two dimensions, if you have i and j, i is just 1 in the x direction, 0 in the y direction. j is 0 in the x direction and 1 in the y direction. In 3D, 3D, we've extended this. So i is 1 in the x direction, j is 1 in the y direction, and k is 1 in the z direction. We want to be able to extend this idea and talk about these special vectors. Um, the problem is, is that when we get into much bigger dimensions, uh, we're going to run out of letters and this is going to get very confusing. So what we're going to do is we're going to define this. We're going to call this E1. This we're going to call E2. And this is what we're going to call E3. So in general, what happens? E1 is the vector that has a 1 in the first entry and zeros everywhere else. E2 is a vector that has a 1 in the second entry, zeros everywhere else. E3 is a vector that has 1 in the third row and zeros everywhere else. Blah, blah, blah. We keep doing that until we get down to the second from the last. So that's the n minus first row. It has a 1 and everything else has a 0. And the final standard coordinate is En, has a 1 in the nth row and 0 everywhere else. 
So why is that uh, important? I can take any vector x and I can write it as a linear combination of e1, e2, e3, e4, all the way out to en. And the idea is that if I take x1 times this, this is going to be the vector that has x1 at the top, because x1 times 1 will give me that. This root whole vector here will have x2 in the second entry, so when I add it, I'll have that, and I keep going. Okay. So any vector, and this is the key thing, any vector can be written as a linear combination of e1, e2, on out. So that means if I want to take t of x, I can now write x in this form. And now I can use the uh, idea that if this is a linear transformation, I can now break this out. So I can take this vector out, this vector, this vector, and this vector, and sum it up. Now these are scalars. So I can pull those out for the second property of linear transformation, and I get that. So what do we have here? This, right, if I think of this as a1, that's some vector a1, that's some vector a2, that's some vector a3, and I go all the way out to a n. This is the same as taking a matrix where I've got a1, a2, a3 for the columns times the vector x. So if I can figure out what t of e1 is, then I can get the first column of this matrix. If I can do t of e2, I get the second column and on, on out. So by doing this much information about my linear transformation, I can figure out what it's going to be for every vector x. Uh, just to be careful here, the notation in the book is like this. Instead of calling this a1, it leaves it as t of e1. Oops. Second column is going to be t of e2. Third column is going to be t of e3 down to the last column, which is going to be t of en. All right. Okay. So what happened here is I can take t, write it like that, and now I can now think of this as the first column of a matrix, second column of the matrix, third, and on out. In this matrix A, the first column is t of e1, second column, it's T of E2, third column is T of E3, till I get to the last column. So this is really nice. This says that if I know that T is a linear transformation, I can express it as a matrix times a vector if I happen to know what T acting on uh, the standard coordinate vectors are.